Hi everyone, welcome to Becky's Crafting Goodies. Today we are going to start and we're going to paint this unit. Now this came from the auctions and I picked it up for just £10. So it was an absolute bargain. What I've done is I've taken the top part off. We call these Welsh dressers here in the UK, but I know that um, some of our American friends call them um, a hutch. So we've taken the top part off and it's pretty sound. That You know, there's no sort of bits that need repairing or anything like that so we're just going to go straight on and um, wash it so it needs to be free from dirt dust and everything like that so it has to have a clean you have to have a clean start so you can use um, sugar soap if you've got something that's particularly grubby but all I've got in this bowl is just some warm soapy water so I'm just going over the piece now I'm going to give it a good clean make sure it's dry I'll do that to the bottom part as well Incidentally, this is not the bottom that matches it. This is another piece that I'm going to be painting in some different paint. Um, so but I've just stood it on here so I can paint this top, this top part. Now the paint we're going to be using for this video, let me just grab this, is this French chic paint. Okay, so this is the one we're going to give a go. And I'll just quickly show you while um, I'm in between doing this. And the colour that I'm going to use is this one. Apparently this is one of the most popular, popular colours and this is called Posh Nelly and it's a grey colour. So that's what we're going to use. I've also got some different brushes which I'll show you as well when we get into it and the, um, the finishing coat as well. And I've got some different wax to try. So I'm really excited to try these new paints um, and it's great that I get to test them out for you guys. So um, I'll pop that down there. I'll just carry on cleaning. We're getting off some dirt from there but as I say it doesn't look too bad but some that you get are really quite grubby um, so go over it give it all a good clean clean the bottom part and then we'll start painting right so we're going to start with this um the French chic paint now I bought two of those because I wasn't sure how far it would go this dresser isn't actually that big and it wasn't that dirty so I'm really really pleased with that um, I bought a couple of other brushes um, this brush here is like a flat kind of brush um, I think it makes painting much easier so I'm going to give that a try I've also got these couple of brushes as well I don't know if you can see these um, these were 9.95 and 8.95 and they're the French chic brush um, one of them I'm going to try and use to put the wax on and um, if all being well and then sort of that one gets in the little crevices so i'll try both of those i've also got the french chic finishing coat that goes over the top that's the top coat apparently that is very very good so i'll be trying that and wax wise i picked these up i've got one of the white wax now you can use white wax to give different effects um, over the top and i've also got the um, clear wax as well so they're the products that we have to try. I'm going to um, start now, just open the can and start painting. Right, so this is the brush that I'm going to start by using. I've seen people use these um, on YouTube before and I really, really wanted to give it a try. They seem like easy to hold. Um, and this is the French Chic. So this is a dark piece of wood, so more than likely we are going to need at least two coats. So you generally, um, you know, find that when you've got a dark wood, don't worry too much about how the, the bottom coat goes on because the second coats usually cover it fine. Now I've decided to go with grey. Um, it's, it's a colour that's still in fashion, it's still popular. Um, and when you've got when you've got products and pieces of furniture that have to go in living spaces it kind of unless it's specifically for someone you want it to kind of match you know any kind of house now to me this has actually got like some green tones in it although it's gray I can see I can see green in it as well um, so we'll see how it dries so I'm going to go over this now give this a coat it's going on very nicely it doesn't smell like some some paints are quite strong it hasn't really got that much of um, an odor to it so if you are sensitive then um, then that would work quite well um, so I'm going to try both brushes in fact while you're here I'm going to give this one a go and see how that is and that that gets in the corners quite well 
Um, so leave me to it, guys. I'll paint some of this and um, I'll show you, show you it in a bit. So that's had one coat and that's just going to just sit there now and dry. And all I'm going to do is start on the bottom part. So I'm just going to start on the bottom part now. And I've just put this onto a table just um, to save me bending down so much. So I'm going to do exactly the same thing. Now this little brush is um, really handy to get inside the little crevices because there's a little bit of um, like designs and stuff in the um, in the wood where it sort of goes in and out. So well, I'm just going to use this brush and this will help get into all the, the little nooks and crannies on the front. And I'm just going to paint the front of the drawers. Sometimes when you put paint all the way in, inside, um, it makes it really hard to get the drawer in and out. So I'm just literally painting the front um, of the drawers and the side and the top. Now I did think about changing um, the knobs and the handles on this, but I'm going to, I think that'd be cool. I think we can um, make the piece look really cute and keep the original ones on. They've both had one coat. I'm just letting them dry. I have painted the back of this piece. Um, it's took quite well. It's personal preference if you paint the back or not. I've decided to on this occasion. So this is just drying. The first coat's drying. I've painted inside. I've painted over the hardware because I'm going to do a bit of a, a wet distress, distress. I've not painted inside and I've just left the drawers as well, but I've done the drawer front. So we're going to let that dry. I'm going to give it another coat and then we'll start and distress it. Right, so these are drying now. They've both had two coats and I'm really, really impressed with how the paint's gone on with the finish. It was quite dark wood before and two coats have completely covered it. So yeah, I'm really, really pleased with it. I think it's looking absolutely fab. I'm going to give this a little while to dry. I'm not going to do anything else to it today. I am just going to look in my um, napkin box just to see what napkins I've got. They're over here just to distress. Um, when I distress it and I'm going to put some napkins on it. So I'm just going to have a little rummage in, in here and have a look and see what I could use. And um, that's about it for today. But so far, I am really impressed with, with the chalk paint. I've actually painted the hardware on this. Um, it wasn't anything particularly special. So I've just gone over it with the paint and I'm going to do something called a wet distress. All you need to do is to get um, a wipe or something like that, just a normal baby wipe will do. And you just rub it once it's dried, once the paint's dried, and it will kind of distress different parts. And I'm just going to do that on all the hardware. It was absolutely, it's absolutely fine to, um, you know, to paint over it if you want to, or you can take it off. It's completely up to you. But because we're doing this kind of the shabby chic look, then that honestly is absolutely fine to do. And it's things like this here. You just rub it with, um, rub it with um, the, the wipe, and then once you seal over the top, that's when you'll actually seal it in. Um, the knobs again. I've just painted those over. Um, a little bit of fluff on them there, a bit of paint. Also, you've got the detail here. I literally just painted it all over. Normally, I would <clears throat> maybe change the knobs, but these are pretty fixed in, and um, it's kind of a different style, really, to one that I've done before, so I'm going to leave that. And with the decoupage, I'm going to look through my napkins and see what napkins, and I might even put a napkin in these. I'm going to just going to see how it goes and see, you know, what I can do. You can also put decoupage, a little small flower on there. There's various other things you can do, um, but I've, I've really enjoyed painting this. It hasn't been um, a chore at all. It hasn't it hasn't felt like, oh my God, I just wish this would be over. It's um, I've really enjoyed doing it and I could really carry on. So I'm presuming that's down to the paint and the piece was quite easy to paint as well. So I'm just going to have a little look through my um, napkins and see what napkins I could possibly use on it. But I'm just going to show you a few things that I'm looking at just to get you um, the idea really. So I've looked through my napkins. I've also got some rice paper as well, which would work really well. So let's look through them and see what we could put on. So this would be an idea. I'm not going to do this, but that would be really cute. You could put like a little face kind of in each each corner. That would look sweet. These are also really nice. They're kind of about the right size. So you could put one of those in each gap as well. 
Um, there's that. I mean, that might work. I mean, you wouldn't have to put something in each kind of square. You could, you know, you could mix and match and do different things. Moving on to the rice paper, I really liked this. Um, I thought the, the colours went really, really well. I think the blues and the and the grey works beautifully. And the green on these leaves, I think, kind of just, it just works for me in my eyes. And also, if I just spin you around, try to not move you too quickly, you could put something, you know, you could team something up on there for that as well. And then this one, I'm not going to use this, but if you got yourself quite a large print, you could maybe stick something like that at the top. Or if you had a thicker top part here, you could put something, you know, quite large at the top in the middle. And that, again, would look, you know, really sweet. So um, I don't have too many of the rice papers. I just keep them in this in this folder here. Um, you, you can't get the same frayed edge um the, you know that you get on a, as a nap as a napkin um but um you can you know work around and, and do things that way let's just have a look and see what i've got in here because there's quite a few different ones again these came from ebay so you know there's uh there's some nice bits and pieces you can do and get some really nice effects so the decorating i love the decorating part that's always by far my favorite i, I normally find the painting a little bit of a chore but as I said to you I haven't really found it that way with this paint so um, hopefully I'll be able to do a few more but these are these are some that I've had for quite some time but that's beautiful isn't it I know that wouldn't work on this piece but again it's that kind of colour they're really really nice and the Paris one again that's that's lovely well, there's a few different flowers there. They're around about the right size. Like you could put kind of one in each. That would work, wouldn't it? And the flowers are different, so that's a good idea. Yeah, I just thought I'd show you these as well while we're waiting for paint to dry. Right, so now we're going to start and distress them now. And we're going to do something called a wet distress. So what you need for this is something like a baby wipe. And this replaces sanding and it makes a lot less mess to do. I'll just show you what I've done on the bottom half. Right, so this has been achieved by literally rubbing this wipe um, over the piece like that now this will only work if you're using a um, water-based paint like a chalk paint and it'll only work if you haven't sealed it with wax or any kind of top coat so you have to do this before you seal it otherwise it won't work so this is the bottom half of the um the dresser i haven't done the top yet but um i've done the bottom part there and wanted to show you and i'll just show you how to do it on the top part so all you need to do is to get um a wipe i just sort of bend it over my finger like that and you just have to rub and because the paint hasn't been sealed it will bring off the um, the paint under, underneath um, bring off the paint and show the wood underneath so you do that in various places just to pull out a little bit of detail and um, as I say this is just another way that you can distress if you didn't want to use the sandpaper Right, so now I'm going to show you how I decoupage these on, and I think they look really, really sweet. They're ever so simple to do, so I'm just going to pop the um, tripod down here and show you how I did them. Now, I've used napkins. This is the napkin that I've used. This would have come from eBay, so have a look on eBay for, you know, a napkin that, that you want. I um, did the usual, went round it with um, water. I've got the top layer here. So if you haven't seen how to do this, then um, check out my decoupage playlist, which I'll link in the description. Now I'm going to use some of the French Chic finishing coat. I'm going to use that as a decoupage kind of glue. So I'm just pouring some in a little cup like that. So I'm just going to get a little bit of cling film ready. This one I found you don't, when you're using the, um, the, top, the finishing coat as like a top coat, you don't need the cling film so much because you can actually touch it with the brush a little bit more so to start with we get a brush and we get the um the finishing coat 
and you just pop your finishing coat onto the where you want to stick it and then get your napkin very carefully and put it over the top now when using um, Mod Podge it's quite a thick glue and I always put over the um, the cling film over the top but I found with this if you're very careful it does allow you like if you're quick to swipe over the top with the brush but don't go over and over it because it, it won't let you it will just rip okay so that is all I did I'm just going to let that set and then when that's set I'm going to go over it again with another layer of the um, the finishing coat and that is all you need to do so I'm going to do all eight squares in exactly the same print because I think that print looks really really nice I did look through some of my other napkins but um, I thought that would look really nice against the colour but some people might be put off um, by the faces so that's why I haven't used that but um, just to give you an idea you know there's loads of different things it doesn't have to be floral you can do all sorts of different things so I'm just going to finish the rest of these squares now and then we'll decorate the top part okay so there's the top I think I'm just going to put one in this top corner um, I think that looks quite nice because when it's all on together um, I think that will tie in quite nicely right now what we're going to do is um, to do the wax Right, so the wax that I've got is the white wax and the clear wax. And the smell, you can't really smell anything from them at all. Um, I open these with them um, with a knife, just dug them in the top there. So that's the white wax. So we're going to use that to give a different effect. And we're also going to use the clear wax as well. The only thing I will say about the paint is it's really hard. It, I find it really hard to open the lid on the paint. That's the only grumble that I've got with it. I absolutely love this paint and so far it's one of my favourites ever. So you know if you do see this don't don't quibble about picking it up. So I'm going to give the wax a go now. Right so I've gone round the corner of um, sort of the edge in here with the white wax and then I'm going to use the clear wax just kind of over the top and over the other part. So this is the, the white one. Um, I just got the brush and went over it and then I'm just going to get the clear and as I said just go sort of over. Right so what I've done is I've gone over these corners, this is the side of the unit and I've gone over it with um, the white wax just around the corners. That's dried and um, what I'm doing now is going over the top with the um, clear wax. Okay so I'm just kind of filling in around the rest of the um the area now if you do get one of these brushes it makes life so much easier because if you're putting wax on with a cloth you're going to be here forever so i do recommend getting a wax brush and and doing it it makes life so much more much easier so i'm just going to go over the rest of the piece here exactly the same way with the wax i'm just dipping it in like that and just rubbing it over and this is how you seal the piece and it will stop like you won't be able to rub it off you know like we did before and um, it should give it a really nice finish now one thing about this is it doesn't have a smell and some of them have really strong smells and I don't know about you guys but they give me a headache but this one touch wood so far it hasn't given me a headache at all and it's not strong in the slightest in fact it's quite fun i'm quite enjoying it so i'm just going to finish this i'll do the same with the other side let me show you the front so you can pick out different bits of detail so i'm going to use the white and you can kind of just pick out some certain bits and these kind of stipply brushes they really do get into the into the corners and then you can go round with the clear and when that's all done we're just going to let that set now with this bit here what I did is put the finishing coat all the way around that rim because it does change the colour slightly and I thought if the same colours if if it's changed the colour in that centre part that's absolutely fine because it you know you won't really see it so I'm just going to go around this with the um with the clear wax and just 
team it all up. So get a bit of elbow grease and I'll get that done now. And here we go, I've put the top onto the bottom part and all I did was rub over the wax when it had dried with um, just like a linen-free cloth. And that's it completely finished and I really, really love it and it is completely different, isn't it, to how it started out life um, in the auctions. So um, as a roundup, I absolutely love the French Chic paint, I love the wax, I love everything about it, it doesn't smell, it goes on nice. The wet distressing is I think it's my favourite way to distress. It's really, really easy and it's less mess. Um, it just depends if you can wet distress with what the paint's like, really, and if you can get away with not sanding it. So that's it. I hope you've really enjoyed this. I've enjoyed doing the project. I've got another paint coming up very, very soon. There's a little pug, look, gone in the, uh, the shot there. And um, that's it. I hope you're okay and I'll see you again soon. Bye for now.